We're ready to go live. So I am going to hit it right here now for you guys. It's Gavin Syme here on the Syme live show. And we got another workshop today. I, I am a few minutes late because I just wanted to give you guys all time to get on there, to get on there and to kind of get dialed in. No, I'm, I'm totally kidding. I was just late trying to get all the cameras dialed in and adjust the focus and the lighting. And I mean, you can see that I've, I've kind of got a lot of things going on here. And then we've got the screen and I've got, I'm actually running on a Fuji right here. I, I'm just pulling off the XE3 and I got a Sony a7 III over there. And then here's the Fuji and I've got a little lot going in real time. If this crashes, I'm running OBS Studio and occasionally we have crashes, but it shouldn't stop the stream It'll go black for a minute, um, so if you lose me for a second, uh, OBS is not always perfect. And I know the last stream we had a few crashes in the workshop, but uh, I realized that I can just quickly bring it back up. And the stream over here on the browser side, where all your comments are coming in, where the real-time feeds are coming in, it's all good. Let me know if you guys are hearing me okay, because I always like to do a little mic check on these before we start the workshop. Probably only going to be about 30 minutes or so today, but I am here in the studio, and I did a session last Saturday, I think it was, uh, where Sandra helped me and we took c Sloud and we did, I've been doing a lot of these fashion type sessions that I've been showing you lately, kind of practice sessions with new models down here in Mexico, and they've been really cool. So I have one today that I haven't edited. I've gone through, I've sorted today's session, and I've done the ratings because that can take 20, 30 minutes in itself on a session, even using my speed edit, speed rating system. So I showed you guys that in the other video where I talked about calling images and sorting images. So if you missed those live streams, go to the channel and let me know how you're liking these, these live workshops versus, you know, doing pre-recorded videos. Because I can do more if I do live is kind of the thing. So it sounds like it's coming through good. We should have a 1080p stream coming through here. Uh, let's take a look hands-on. In today's workshop, we're gonna get hands-on and take a look at using Belladonna 2. And this is gonna be kind of the hands-on video that you guys have been asking for for Belladonna, which is uh, our cinematic color presets collection for Lightroom, for Capture One. It's phenomenal for anything portraits, anything weddings. It's kind of my go-to set for that. Uh, when it comes to color. If I want a more filmic look, I might lean towards Filmist. If I'm just doing, want a lot of variety in my color and a lot of cinematic feel, I'll use Belladonna. And there's actually gonna be an update coming shortly after this video. I'm working on some pretty major updates for the colors in Capture One just to refine it. I always like to do some major refinements after the release because Capture One takes a little bit of work to get dialed in honestly a little more than Lightroom does. And there'll be an update for Lightroom coming soon too. But you can actually head over to simefx.com slash Belladonna if you don't have Belladonna because this is a great set for doing more with cinematic color. And what does that mean? What color is right on an image? So I'm gonna be going through and we're gonna be talking about this because it's difficult. It's difficult because whatever camera, Sony, Fuji, Nikon, Canon, Olympus, what every camera sees as good skin tone, for example. And of course, Belladonna works great on other scenes and urban scenes, but it's really designed to give us a lot of mixing of color and light and profiles. If you shoot a Fuji camera, if you shoot a Fuji camera, we have, you know, these color profiles and we have a Velvia and we have kind of these film inspired looks, kind of like we do when I edit with Filmist presets. If you shoot Sony, it has its pre-files, profiles, but most of us are shooting in raw, at least I think most of us should be most of the time because there's just so much more information and control. Presets are a way that I can have all these color profiles, including it looks like classic films, but I can change them to however I want for whatever scene. And I'm gonna get into the combination, and I talked about this on PhotoKit recently, how you basically have your, your color profile, your preset, uh, or your overall color grade, and this is a, like in video, for example, with LUTs and our Filmist pack actually has a LUT pack and I'm running on this video you're watching right now, a Filmist LUT through OBS Studio just to do a little bit of a color grading on what's coming out of the cameras here. But in Lightroom, we have presets and Capture One, we're using styles. But the bottom line is we have this color profile and then we kind of balance that out with white balance. 
So a color profile, whether it looks perfect or amazing, can vary a lot by white balance. And we're going to look at that a little bit today. That's why I almost never make presets to change white balance because it's such a variable. So I change things every other way, every other channel, every other technique. And I've learned that in what, 15 years now of making tools and styles to make us work quicker. But to those of you who are watching this live, clean my glasses a little. To those of you who are watching this live, I'm gonna be watching your comments and I'm gonna be reviewing that, trying to address your questions on Belladonna and on color as we go through this, but not get too long on this because Belladonna is really easy and simple to use. And then at the end, I'll try and take some questions as well. But our focus obviously today is gonna to be on editing this portrait session as efficiently as possible and primarily using Belladonna. And we're gonna use some manual tweaks too, but I wanna show you guys how that works. Um, thanks Clean Green Earth for all. And Kenneth, I appreciate it. Glad you guys like the photo kit. And I got more of those coming. I know I'm falling a little bit behind with the past few months of Christmas and Silver Four and Belladonna and all this stuff, but I've got some good stuff. And to those of you who are Photo Kit subscribers, I just launched, I think I sent one last week and I'm working on some, got some more in the can here. So if, if you want to get my monthly packs, which include presets, actions, a video every month, check over at signeffects.com forward slash kit. But today let's focus on Belladonna and I'm going to go to the mix screen right here. And you should be able to see me in the corner and then the screen. And it is Friday, the 5th of February. We're going to go into Lightroom. And I've got this whole session here that I did with Sista. Now, we have like 600 photos here. So you can see if I scroll through all these, there's a whole bunch of photos. They look good. But I'm not going to do the sorting. I've already rated to five stars, like I showed you in the video of how I sort. So I rated to five stars. And I had like 123 out of 600 that were five star. And then I took those favorite five stars and said, well, what do I actually want to send, right? Because there's still some redundancy even in my five stars. So where do I want to go from there? That's where I do my red labels. And my red labels are basically the finals. These are what I'm going to send to the model. These are what I'm going to take my favorites of those and share to Instagram and things like that. Maybe print some of them. But we're going to be focusing on that Lightroom edit today. And I've actually just made a collection down here of all the five red stars. So we have like 65 photos that we're going to edit. But this actually represents each set, each pose, each outfit, each change in this session that we did, which lasted about three hours all the way till sunset. Now, if you want to follow along with this in the comments of the video and in the newsletter I sent from simfx.com today, there's a download where you can get Basically, I put an image, a favorite image from each of these poses, of these outfit changes, and you can download the raw files, load them into your Lightroom or your Capture One, and you can play along and use the same presets, the same tweaks. So this is the first time I've actually done this on one of our live videos where you can actually download the raw file pack that corresponds to this session. It's in the comments below as well. If you enjoy this, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe to the channel and spread the word, I'm trying to make these as good as we can. Okay, let's go in and look. I'm gonna switch back to the screen and you can see here that I had my main session here with all the images, all 600, filtered those down to fives and then filtered those down to the reds. All right, and that is what we have here with these different sets. Now, when I edit a portrait session. And I've talked about this a little bit before, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think in groups. And you can see if you look over my setting here, right, we have these poses, we have these sets, as it were. Most of these changes, outfit changes, pose, location changes, a lot of times I'm moving, I'm changing the background. But each time I change the clothes or the background, effectively, I'm changing my light. I might be changing the positioning of my light. So each time I do a new set, I have a different look. What I do when I'm editing to edit portraits efficiently is I think in terms of that look. So let me show you what I mean. I'm coming in here. I've edited one or two of these just to play around as I was working with them and, and get some ideas. And let's kind of reset most of those. Most of these are just straight raw XT3 files out of camera. A uh, few of these are shot on a vintage, I think I had a vintage Canon 1.4 on a couple of these, like this one right here. And you can see this is kind of a lower contrast vintage look here down by the river. 
Uh, let's just flip through and you can kind of see the different sets. Again, another one here down by the river with the crown, really cute. And this one with kind of the boyfriend shirt looking good. Uh, some really cute ones there. The black sweater, really dark in those blacks, but I like these and we'll look at lifting those blacks as we edit these. This little white jacket, completely the opposite of the black, right? Now we're like super bright. And this nice dress for something just kind of a little in between. And this shot that's kind of nice, but doesn't quite match the rest of the scene. So, okay, great. How do we edit that? That's the main thing, is how do we edit this efficiently? I'm always talking about it efficiently, and I want to focus on how I'm going to use presets in Belladonna to do this, because some of you are watching this as a tutorial for Belladonna. And I'm going to show you real quick how I would edit with Belladonna. You know when I grid edit, I'm going to go in. My white balance is on auto. Okay, let's switch back to the screen. My white balance is on auto out of camera, not auto in Lightroom, because it usually gets it wrong. So I do generally do auto white balance in camera and then tweak it as I need it. But that usually comes later. I assume that my white balance is probably close. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look. You can see I have a grouping of these images here that are all relatively the same. We might have slight variance in exposure, and so I might increase a little bit on the exposure on those, but mostly these are good. Now let's say I need to bump the exposure a little bit. Here's my raw out of camera. What color profile do I want to use? And this comes down to every camera shooting differently. And everybody says, well, this is good skin tones or that's good skin tones. But really, good skin tones are what you are visualizing for that. Now, of course, we have uh, Latina, Morena kind of skin tone here, but Cisla is not super dark skin tone and she's not super white skin tone. For those that have not visited or lived in Mexico, it, it, there's often this perception that everyone's of, of a darker color skin down here. And that's actually completely incorrect. A lot of people are very light skinned, like I am, that are more of Spanish descent. The people that are more of native descent tend to be darker and the people that are kind of in between tend to be kind of brown, kind of that perfect golden brown that in the US we're always looking for in our skin and we go to the beach and try and get a tan to get this tone right here. And they're all beautiful. And I think the funny thing is that down here they see white skin as exotic and we come here and we see their golden brown skin as exotic. So it's funny how the world works. But the bottom line is when you're editing a photo, you do want to be I think, true to form in terms of what that person looks like most of the time. Of course, the more you lean towards fashion session, the more creative interpretation you have. But what is the interpretation of anyone's given skin color? Some cameras interpret that more pink, some interpret it more red, some interpret it more green. And if you've shot any kind of different types of camera or any different lighting conditions, you know this is true. So what I'm getting at is, this is why I love using Belladonna, is because I can come in here and up at the top in Belladonna, I have it loaded here. By the way, if you need help installing Belladonna, signeffects.com forward slash help. I've already got it installed here in Lightroom. And by the way, it works virtually identical in Capture One. And I'm gonna be focusing mostly on Lightroom today because I'm quicker and more fluid in Lightroom, but it's gonna work the same in Capture One. Okay, so we have these kind of fixer presets, but I don't really need to fix these because this is a fashion session. I had a 48 inch off camera shoot through umbrella softbox and by and large, everything just looking good. Let's start them by going to the Bella Classics or the Bella Cinema looks. What I'm gonna do, and you might look at some of these and say, well, these are just way too much. Belladonna was specifically designed so you can kind of browse through and say, what combination of background colors, how bright the greens, how bright the blues. You can see that some of these have more blue in the hair. Some of them are pulling down the blue. This here, Southern Satin, is a very soft kind of skin tone. So we haven't changed her skin tone so much, but we've softened the level of oranges. There's a little more blue to this one. Uh, Snow Fade is obviously almost a cinematic, not even quite natural, almost a color fade kind of look. Uh, High Society, Crimson Crossed, Hollywood Lights, None of these are wrong, and none of these are especially right. And I think this is what people get wrong when editing their portraits and their skin tones, is they're either of the mind that they have to go way extreme and make it seem surrealistic sometimes, because maybe we saw it on a YouTube video or something like that, or that you need a, quote, natural skin color 
which I guess someone might say, well, I don't need to change anything. I've lit this pretty well. This photo looks pretty good. So what's the problem? I have a natural skin color, except for you don't because there is no real natural skin color coming out of the camera. Just like every film interpreted color differently, every sensor interprets color differently, and even the way that the white balance is. So the Belladonna presets are gonna leave your white balance alone. And what I will do is I'll come in here and here's a tip for presets. If you run a preset like Southern Satin and you say, that seems a little too blue. To me, it doesn't mean the preset doesn't work. If the overall theme, the way it handles the greens or the yellows or the, the softness, the texture of the skin is working, I don't throw the preset out just cause it's a little too warm or a little too red, even though that preset has applied a look, a color profile. Then I come back and I might say, okay, I like this, but let's warm it up a little bit in the white balance and boom, just like that. So a good preset should almost always leave white balance alone, just like all of our sign presets do, because those are variable to your lighting and to your scene and the preset can't guess at those. What the preset can do is what Belladonna is doing and what Muse does and what Filmus does and Power Workflow and Silver and all of these is it can use hue, saturation, luminance, color grading, all of these subtleties. It can use curves and working with those curves in here to get different color profiles, different looks, just like film did. And I think that's one of the most powerful tools that we have with portraits. Let's go to Hollywood Lights. Again, kind of a warm scene. Let's switch this back to as shot, but I like it a little warmer. Okay, it looks good. The question that I'm gonna do when I edit to be efficiently editing and to have it look really good, because I want this whole thing edited in 30 minutes and that gives me like 14 minutes left. So I don't know if I can pull that off or not. What I'm gonna do is go through the presets and find one that I feel looks good. You can see some of these are more orange. Some of these are great. Some of these are a little over the top. Nightshade, this is for darker images. It's lifting it up. Belladonna is designed to let you kind of go down and go through, not be over the top, not have a lot of mods, a lot of one-click color looks. It's like going through and loading 40 different kinds of film and seeing the same scene without having to change a roll of film. And that's why I like it. That's why it's so good for portraits because most of these would work. Some of these might be a little oversaturated. Some of them might have a little white balance that they need to tweak. But what I can do is find one and say, okay, I like this. I like this. Let's go Midsummer. This is nice. Model fade. This is nice. It's a little cooler. Uh, Crystal Ball, Classic 83 is a little more vintage, just like Bella's Midnight, Bella's Castle. I'm going to go something not too intense here, like Late Summer. I think I'm going to go Midsummer on this, okay? Now, it looks good. The white balance doesn't even look bad. I'm gonna pump the saturation a tiny bit and I'm gonna pull the, satur the white balance a tiny bit into the blues, just like this, okay? Now, I can think about cropping each of these and how I'd wanna do it. I can put some vignettes on them. Occasionally, the presets actually are gonna add some vignettes, but most of the time they leave the vignettes alone. Okay, so I feel like we have good skin tones here. The background is nice. Look at the nice smoothness in the skin tones. Uh, I might come in here and let's do the mods. You can see there are a few mods at the top of Belladonna. So you have all these color looks, but then we have like the filmic grain mod. So I'm gonna put a little bit of grain in the skin just to bring that texture in. And let me just take that away. And I'm gonna put it back now. And you can see not a lot of grain here. It's not intense, it just works. And I'm gonna do a vignette in this case and just darken those edges down just a little bit. I'm not entirely sure that there's not other presets that I wouldn't like here just as much. I like Lover's Trust here, but it's a little bit darker, so I need to push the exposure a little bit more. I'm gonna go with this one, actually. I like it better. Okay, here's what I'm doing, though, when I edit. And this is what I'm getting at with each grouping of images. I'm taking one, I'm getting it the way I look, the way I like. Now I have it the way I like. Let's switch back to screen. I'm gonna shift control C, and I'm gonna copy basically everything. Sometimes I'll leave alone exposure. I'm going to leave exposure out because sometimes that varies by shot. A lot of times when I copy and paste, I will leave white balance out, but I'm going to try to copy white balance on this as well because I tweaked it a little bit and I think it's working. I'm going to turn on sharpening, grain. I'm not going to turn on crop or local adjustments or anything like that, just my basic settings, and I'm going to copy those. I'm just going to go to the grid and I'm going to select 
all of these from this set. And you can see very quickly as I do this, how it's gonna get fast. Shift Control V, I'm pasting these now onto all of these. And wow, it's making some of them too dark. It wasn't a good idea to copy exposure. I'm gonna leave exposure copy out. Or you know what? No, I didn't copy exposure. I'm going to copy exposure. If it doesn't work, redo it. It's okay. And this is the beauty of these quick edits. Boom. Now I copied exposure. You can see we have consistent color pretty much throughout on these. Um, this one, what happens if I paste it on here? It works here too. I'm going to crop a little bit. Uh, there's some noise out there. It sounds like the ice cream man is going by, which probably means my kids are going to be pounding on the door. Uh, but I'm going to brighten those up. And so you can see I'm switching back and forth between this grid mode, hitting the space bar, and going into this mode, and then into develop mode. So I've kind of got my, my library view, my grid view, and my develop view. And all of these are looking pretty good. Some of them need a little bit of cropping. But a lot of times I'll come back and I'll crop at the end. So I'm going to come in here. These are all now processed. Just like that. Now at the end, I'm going to come back through and review everything. Maybe do a little lightening, darkening, tweaking of white balance, etc. But other than that, it's good. Let's move on to the next set. So this next set, there's not a lot in here. The first thing I will actually do in this set is paste the one I just used. And actually, it's looking pretty dang good. Now, I don't think we need so much exposure control on this one. So what I'll do oftentimes is use the one from the previous set, paste it on the next set to get the general feel, and then I'll go in and say, well, let's do something a little different maybe. I like actually pinholes on this. We're kind of in the sugar cane. This is super warm, I know, so I'm going to cool it down just a little bit. Then I'm going to put saturation to zero. I just think it looks really good. I'm going to crop her up just a little bit here. And this is what I'm saying about skin tone. We're not necessarily making the skin lighter or darker in its overall tone, but what we are doing is we're subtly shifting which skin tones, whether it's more orange, whether it has more green, whether it has more blue, this can vary by lighting. It can vary by sensor. And what Belladonna allows me to do is to quickly get a lot of different variables to find out which skin tone works for this scene. This idea that because Sony maybe shoots more green and Fuji a little more red and Canon a little more neutral, if that's even true, right? Everybody has a different opinion on this. But this concept that that is what makes it better or worse is kind of a fallacy because these are all raw files, essentially. It's so easy to shift the reds or the greens. So it's great to have good looking images that have camera. But what one session has a certain lighting and it looks great on a Canon camera, another light or another session might look better on the Sony out of camera or on the Fuji. So don't worry about that. Worry about how you can quickly get your edit and get the color you want. You can see that a lot of these are portrait geared. A lot of times on portraits, especially with these razor sharp lenses today, I'll think a little bit different than a landscape. And some of these are dialing back the clarity. Now, if you want a more punchy look, you can of course punch up that clarity. But the point is, you can go through and apply these presets. And if you want it more gritty, you could apply the texture mod preset, which is also in Belladonna. I try to give a basic set of mod tools in every preset collection, so you can quickly shift things to being more contrast. You can do an auto white balance preset if you want right here in Belladonna, although I, I don't use it much. I don't like it that well. Uh, the cool it mod, the warm it mod. These are quick mods that leave all the other settings alone, the vignette mod. So don't forget those mods and they're right at the top, right underneath the Bella's toolbox, which is kind of meant for problem solving. If your images are lit and colored well, the Bella's toolbox might be a little bit more than you want to work with on this, okay? So like some of these might be a little too intense because they're trying to correct boring light or reception light or something like that, similar to how some of our magic presets work in Power Workflow. But the mods down below, like white balance, warming, cooling, texture to bring out a little more clarity versus the soft skin tone kind of look, these can all be very, very powerful, okay? And thanks, Kenneth. We'll keep it up, come back soon and finish this up. Okay, so we're still editing. I think this looks good. I'm just gonna copy it. And I'm actually gonna copy it with the exposure and the white balance since I didn't did a custom white balance and simply paste it to all of these. I may have to correct a couple of them, 
or exposure, although actually they all look pretty good. These two are a little dark. I'm going to do a little bit of an exposure lift on these two, and you can see there we are. Okay, now I'm coming into the ones with the black sweater. I know I'm going to have to lift this one a little bit, and see how dark that is? I'm going to undo that paste, go to develop, and I'm just going to, again, swing through the presets. I know I'm going to have to increase exposure just a little on this, but more importantly, I'm going to have to watch the shadows of that sweater because it's very, very black. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to go down to Bella Cinema. These are some of my favorite looks right now. Some of them are intense. Some of them are very, very gentle. Uh, some of them, like Nightshade, lift the shadows for night scenes and things like that. But I think these are a little too much for this because we do have quite a bit of light. I think Midsummer is good here. Or we could go something a little more gritty and intense, like the Bellas series. And these can be very cinematic, really cool for weddings, things like that. Classic 83, Beauty Drop. Uh, but this is a little contrasty, so I'm going to play it a little bit safer with this one and use the Bella series on one of the other ones. Everyone's going to have a different impression, a different feel of what they think works best. I think Face Sunrise or Skin Tones just look really good here. And so I'm going to run that one, uh, but I might zero out this saturation slider over here. Now what I'm going to do, I'm using the preset, you can see. I'm getting a look. To go through all of those looks manually would have taken me 30 minutes because I just tried 20 different looks, 20 different subtle curve and channel combinations. Now I'm saying, okay, I like it. But I'm going to lift the shadows a little bit more than I normally would because I want to bring out those blacks. And I'm going to lift my blacks just a little bit here too. See how we're bringing, by bringing the curve up a little bit here, we're bringing those blacks up just a little bit. This is not that intense of a process, but it looks good. And just like before, what am I going to do? I'm going to copy and I'm just going to click these. There's quite a few here and I'm going to paste them all, exposure and all, right here onto these. And it screwed up the white balance a little bit. So I'm just going to go and reset my white balance here in the quick develop. I'm going to switch it to auto and then back to as shot. So it resets all of these to as shot. And some of the, the latest versions of Lightroom are kind of glitchy with the white balance when you copy and paste. So if you're seeing a problem with that, a lot of times you just need to switch it back. Okay, overall we're looking good. Some of these are a little bit too exposed. So I'm going to hit that space bar and I'm going to go through and just manually adjust exposure a little bit on these. Uh, and this is why sometimes I will not paste and copy the exposure. It just depends on the light. That one's actually pretty good. I might even expose that up a little bit. Now, I might come back on these, and as a group, I think all of these might benefit with a little bit of vignette, maybe even a little bit of a gradient filter. Sometimes that pastes well, and it copies over perfectly, and other times not. So don't be afraid to do some manual work on that to dial it in. But you can see we are moving very quickly here, and I'm going through. Ooh, that's nice. I could almost put my contrast and my blacks down a little more on this one. Obviously, there's going to be subtle variables between each of these, but you can see if we look at our raw file versus our process, we're looking good. Let's see what we have next on the list. We're moving right down. Oh, here's this sweater one. This one's really cool. Again, we have a lot of these, so I'm going to pick one that kind of is representative of the whole theme here and right in the middle. Let's take the light from right in the middle and let's go in and find something that looks cool on this. These are kind of intense. There's nothing wrong with intense. Don't be afraid to use a little intense. In fact, I'm going to take something like the Blue Dancer maybe, which is leaning a little bit towards blue, but it kind of looks creamy and cool. And if the color is not completely natural, it doesn't necessarily matter to me because I like it. Now you might think differently, but I like the way this is handling the reds and the blues. My white balance is as shot. My exposure is zero. So I'm going to uncheck white balance and exposure. Copy. And I'm going to quickly come in here. Click, shift, click again. And pasting that to all 12 of those. Just like that. And we should see it come across. You can see that we're back to that Lightroom bug that I don't know why they haven't fixed yet. It seems to be glitching out the white balance just a little bit. So what I'll do to fix that when it does the white balance... Weird now, go to the quick develop. I'm going to switch it to any other white balance mode and then back to auto. Sometimes it takes a minute to refresh, but actually these are coming through just beautifully. Okay, so now we've graded those. And you can see that what we're doing here is we're not only editing fast, but we are getting 
a grade that is consistent, right? Each grouping of images has a relatively consistent look versus, versus I have all these images in the same pose and the same outfit, and one of them is leaning red, and one is leaning green, and one is black and white. I'll try to break things into mini groups as we edit because I think it's a really powerful tool. Okay, now let's continue. We just got a couple of the same outfit, but in this different scene. I'm gonna paste our same settings and see if they work, but they're kind of weird, and I don't know what's going on with that uh, because it's completely different lighting. So I'm actually gonna come in here and use something like maybe Jungle Pool, soften that lighting up just a little bit. You can see as I use Belladonna here, and this is the same for any preset pack, but Belladonna I designed specifically so that we can quickly go through and get color combinations that let us have control, that let us shift. Not just subtle contrast and black point and shadow and highlight combinations, but real looks, real kind of film inspired type looks that get us really strong images. Oops, I had those both selected and I cropped this one. Let's go back, paste the look. I just don't like what it's doing with white balance here, but there we go, that's better. And then go up here. This one's a little harsh on the lighting, quite frankly. I don't know if I'll keep this one in there. I just wanted to show you guys the variety. I'm gonna crop out the knees on this one. Oh, it's getting funner now. As a little closer up, I kind of like it. And this one, the light's a little harsh. So even though I'm using the same color, I'm gonna lift the shadows a little bit on that one. And there we go. Let's look at what we've done. We're, we're through most of these. We only got a couple left. And I'm right about 30 minutes here. I know I'm a little over time, but it's cool. Let's take one of our midpoints on these. These are really cute in this kind of sheer blouse. And I like them. Let's come in and do something maybe a little more intense on this one, like a classic 83, a Bella's something, Bella's Castle. These are very vintage. They're almost Agfa Flex. They're kind of Agfa Flex inspired looks, which is a very vintage film that had very faded color. I don't want to lose too much in my shadows though. So I'm kind of trying to find the balance. I want something that's a little bit edgy here because she's got the crown. It's a little bit princessy. So I want it to be kind of intense without going too far. And I'm going to do Bella Sunrise, I think. But then what I'm going to do, you can see it's a pretty intense look. I'm actually going to lift the shadows a little bit and zero out the clarity to soften it just a touch. And honestly, that's pretty good. I could tweak the white balance. Oh, way too much blue. But I'm going to leave the white balance. I like the warmth on this. And I might lift my shadows on the curve just a little bit here so it's not quite so intense. Now, you can see I just made some quick changes in the preset. And this is what I've been telling people for years. And especially the people that rail on me like, oh, real pros shouldn't use presets. And I say, you know, a real pro should use whatever tool he can to get the look the best he can get it. And if you're efficient, you're gonna get more looks better, but do not be afraid to go over to those sliders and just tweak it a little bit for this profile. We still have the Bella Sunrise look and we've modified this image a lot. However, we tweaked it just a little bit for this image. And again, I'm going to copy and paste, leaving out the white balance and exposure. And I'm gonna paste it to all of these just like that. And you can see that Lightroom is introducing that white balance glitch again. Don't get me started. I'm going to switch it to another white balance and back to as shot in this case. Hopefully that white balance glitch in the latest versions of Lightroom will be fixed very soon. And so now you can see as we come through here, these are all a little bit bold. Now I will sometimes switch into two groups. This one's too dark, obviously. I need to bump that up just a little bit. And this one's feeling a little harsh overall. So what I might even do is do something like late summer that's a much softer process, okay, and then copy that and say, well, let's do a mixed group. These first ones are a little harsher on the light. Let's take these first four or five and make it one look, all right, that's a little more gentle. And then these ones will be our Bella's look, these four or five. And then I'm going to come down here. Do I like these? They feel like they're a little green because, again, our light is changing, especially at sunset. Our light is changing so fast. So I don't have a rule that says, oh, I, I can't have a different look on a grouping of images. I just want it to feel consistent. I'm going to copy and paste again. So you can see I'm doing sub variants. Now I'm taking this bottom row that clearly has a little bit different feel to the lighting. 
because I moved her. You can see here she's in the palm, so the lighting's coming from this direction. The sun is in front of her now, whereas in these ones up here, where you see the river, the river reads in the background, the sun was behind her. So even though it's the same set, we're actually dealing with a different set of the same outfit. And sometimes I'll edit them all the same, and sometimes I'll do a micro variant, like in this case, where I paste a new look to all of those. But I'm always working top down. So I paste a preset or apply a preset directly from Belladonna to an entire group. Then I come back and paste it. And then I review it and say, well, does it need to change? And so you can see as I switch between this set, which is the Bella Sunrise, and this set, it's a little bit more subtle. There's a little more green tone, but I really like the way it feels on the skin tone. So I'm fine with it. And there's a degree of consistency because each of these groupings kind of has its own look. Okay, and now we're going to wrap up with these kind of swimsuit ones down by the river. Again, I'm pasting the last used look, which honestly is pretty dang good. But let's go to the presets and just see. I'm going to do something soft on this, like smooth silk, because it's just evening light. It's really going to soften out the harsh shadows. And then I'm going to add the... Oh, I'm going to put... The filament grain on this just to bring a little bit of grain oh i love that that looks great i don't need to tweak it again i'm going to copy i'm going to paste it to all of these now some of these were shot with a vintage lens and i'll show you the difference here in just a second vintage lenses tend to be very soft so on a, a lot of modern lenses with portraits even less expensive ones they're so sharp that i de generally find there is a benefit again having to reset that white balance not something related to the presets or that you should normally have to do the fact that when you copy and paste, it screws up the white balance and I have to go back here and reset it is completely a bug in Lightroom. It's known and they haven't fixed it in like a month. So yeah, go figure. Uh, but you can see here, these are all looking pretty damn good. Now, as we change lightings and scenes and stuff, okay, you can see we just switched here to these ones. See how soft these ones feel? That's because this was a Fuji 50 millimeter F2 and this one, see how it all says 21 millimeter F1? There's no metadata. That's because this was a Canon 50 millimeter. I don't know if I have it here. Um, well, it's one of my vintage lenses back here, okay? But that was a Canon 50 mil 1.4, the classic red ring from the 80s, totally manual focus. The color looks pretty good, but a lot of times on these vintage lenses, I'm, I, that's a pretty soft preset I just use, the model fade. And so I'm gonna clear out my texture and clarity, and I'm gonna put the dehaze up rather than down to bring a little bit more contrast into this. So it still has that yummy vintage look, but now I can take all the vintage ones, paste, and I just brought back a little more detail. Same color profile. So let's look at this. You can see this one here is the 50 mil. Looks good, great contrast, everything's nice. And here's the vintage with the very similar profile that we tweaked just a little bit. Frankly, they both look good. On portraits, I usually really love the vintage look. I might pop down the exposure on these, and I'm going to come through, and I'm probably going to crop in some of these, maybe tweak them. But the edit overall, we've edited the session now, okay? So we've gone through, we had the ratings, we had the sort, and now we have the edit. And some of these edits are a little more extreme. This one's really warm in the sugar canes. Some of them are very natural. Some of them like these are a little bit more cinematic, but all of them are consistent. We edited fast because I spent the first 10 minutes explaining this. We just edited all these with Belladonna in 30 minutes. And to me, that's great. I can come back through here. I can edit these a little bit more, but the bottom line is I have all these great images. They're edited. They're clean. What I will do before I send them is I'll go through and do a review and see what individual settings each of these needs to make it just right. But other than that, I'm happy with them. I'll go through and crop. I might add some more vignettes. I might add a little more grain to some of them. I might come through and I might tweak exposure on a few of them. Make sure that the consistency, the feel is right across the board. And I think that's a good thing to do, but that's easy to do because we've got all our fundamental edits done here. Now we just have to go through and crop and tweak like this here. I don't want the edge of her knees in here. 
on a on a shot like this, I'm generally going to pull it up a little bit. But if my vignette is making her legs maybe seem a little too muddy, I might press the M key, do a gradient, and pull up the dehaze a lot of times. It'll soften the skin of those legs a little bit down below. Not too much, but kind of matching it to the face, and boom, just like that. I might tweak the highlights a little more on this just to bring that jacket down. And if I find something I like, I might paste it to the other ones to get that look right in there. But we just edited a fashion session, and I think that's pretty cool. And one of the things I love about good planning, thinking ahead, getting your, your rating system in order, having a plan, having a visualization from the moment you take out your camera, bringing those files in, I rate them five stars, then I go red, right? If it's a wedding, I might rate three, four, and five stars because I have kind of different subcategories I'm working with, maybe for an album, and then reds are my favorites. Maybe you use green, it doesn't matter. The point is that there's a lot of ways you can do this. I think if we visualize not only our image making from the moment that we pick up the camera, but if we plan the whole thing, we think about our light, we think about our color, we think about our soft boxes, our natural light, where it's coming from, like I talk about in other videos, like I talk about in the Exposed Workshop. But then if you come in and when you edit, you have a plan, not only for efficiency, but to make sure you're challenging your creativity. When I use presets, it's about saving time, but it's also about being more creative. It's that I'm trying things that I would not try otherwise. I'm getting all these cinematic looks that I might not be in the mood for that day. I might not realize that it's what's perfect for this image. I might not be thinking, hey, what happens if I turn the greens down or if I turn the blues down or if I fade my color to more of a 1950s film look. My mind doesn't work that way every day. And even if it did, it would be way too inefficient. You couldn't try all these combinations on every image because it would take forever. You'd never get your sessions ended. And that's what a great pack like Belladonna does for your edit. So I hope this was helpful. You guys, if you have any questions, pop them in there now. I'm going to wrap this video up. I already went 10 minutes longer than I said I would. I might trim this a little bit later for the channel and kind of cut off the opener. But I hope this kind of helped you out, not only to think differently about how you grade color in your portraits, but also just to know how to use Belladonna 2. And if you guys don't have Belladonna 2, head over to the website, check it out. Download the raw files from this session. Um, but you can get Belladonna 2 right here over at simefx.com forward slash Belladonna. And you can get it for the, the launch deal. If you're watching this right now, there's kind of a launch deal going on for Belladonna. You might be watching this later, and that's fine too. Either way, you guys are going to love the results. And you can play with the before and afters here and just kind of see how much you can do with good cinematic edits that you probably aren't going to experiment with on every image. Belladonna is going to make you edit better, especially on those weddings and portraits, uh, which we focused on today, but also street photography, landscapes, anything can benefit from a good cinematic color. And the ability to quickly get a lot of variables in the cinematic color, it's just going to let you try things. And you might say, ah, this is too much. I want something more subtle. And Belladonna has lots of that too. You can see the way we edited today. Some of these were subtle, just Nice skin tones, nice detail, nice texture, great for portraits, great for weddings, great for anything. And some of them were more intense, more cinematic, straight out of Hollywood kind of looks. And some of them were more inspired by film. That's why I loved making Belladonna. I, I've been so excited about it because when we went to Belladonna 2, we learned a lot over the past couple of years. And a lot of emphasis has been putting into, has gone into that cinematic look. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up for today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope that uh, you found this useful, and I hope that you will go and put this to work on yours. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and shout out in the comments if you have any questions or feedback, and you can also download those sample raw files in the comments below. Thank you all. Have a good day.